Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks with Ungani Titan. We're on Malinovka and I'm in the uh, Tiger 1, uh, the German, the Tech Tree Tiger 1, not the Hammer. I uh, took out the Tiger 1 to do the wargaming operation and uh, see if I could get any of the qualifier uh, conditions to complete the German leg of the wargamer operation. And I managed it in one game, unlike the British section, which. Uh, took me most of, the, uh, most of the day. So we're on Malinovka and it's regular Malinovka, not the new frozen version of Malinovka, which is uh, arguably a more interesting map. Um, the central lake being frozen on Malinovka actually opens up a whole host of new possibilities and I think makes um, a push down in front of the hill and along the lake uh, an actual viable proposition um, nobody's tried it yet I haven't seen anybody try it yet I've seen people make raids along the lake and uh, to get to very advanced positions but they generally do so unsupported because people are playing Malinovka in the usual way um, but it's definitely an interesting variant and uh, it changes the dynamic of the game Whereas the standard Malinovka is such that you can't push along the low ground in front of me here where I'm shooting at these tanks across because you get slaughtered from the hill or from tanks uh, spotting at the, the ends, each ends of the base of the hill. Similarly, um, but you can't physically push along the lake because if you push on either side of the lake you uh, again run into uh, problems from uh, people on the opposite bank, so to speak. Um, I'm taking the opportunity here to shoot some targets at long range, just making use of the superb gun on the Tiger, but um, yeah, I think the, the, um, the frozen version of Malinovka could be um, one of the few cases where a map variation actually plays radically different to the previous map. Um, I think one of the problems that Wargaming has, in my opinion, is a lot of the maps the variations don't make significant differences to the way the game is played. I mean, you have the bad weather, the low visibility variations, but people still go to largely the same place and they dominate pretty much the same choke points. Um, you have the war and non-war variants, but essentially the paths through those maps are, are pretty much identical. There may be more or less cover, um, or certain types of cover. But they don't actually make a significant uh, difference to the most part of the way the game is, um, is played or the way the game evolves on any given map. Whereas uh, the two exceptions I think are um, there's a lot of potential in Frozen Erlenberg that people just don't use. Uh, particularly in the regular game when they get onto the northern side the Frozen version um, allows you basically to drive along the ice. Um, so you can get around the northern edge of the map quite uh, quite effectively. But you don't see it done that often. Um, they're here, they're supposed to be area so peripheral that if you've actually won across the top of the map, uh, say from the southern spawn to that location, then um, it's not needed so much. Whereas uh, I think the dynamic on uh, frozen, the frozen lake here potentially could be quite interesting. Um, I missed a couple of shots here in that T29, and I'm pretty sure my reticle was pointing at the tank. Um, I finally get him. And... We're now... Well, we still have to win the top of the hill, like, but... It's looking likely that we're going to do it. This tiger now is the principal opposition uh, stopping us. And everybody else is back much, much further as uh, an IKV 90B. And we get a fortunate ammo rack strike there. It was 800 points of damage, which is the entire hit points of that tank. Uh, that went under the gun mantle of the T25 too, rather than where I was pointing at the turret cheek. But that one goes to where I wanted it, uh, into the turret cheek of the ONE. And the next one should finish him off. So now uh, we're on four kills, so things are actually looking pretty good. 
So my next target's the A44. Um, he's backing off across open ground and he doesn't have much armor. I was unfortunate there to put that one into the um, tracks. And I was um, very fortunate to survive that hit from artillery. I thought I had the T25 too here, but it's just a little too late. Um, and then I thought, okay, we have another crack at the A44. We have him now, he's backed up against a rock. But somebody finishes him off before I get the reload in. Even though there's a fast rate of fire on the Tiger, it's not fast enough to keep up with all the um, all the stuff that's going on. And uh, we have the M44, we fire on the move. And we manage to get the kill shot in. And then I sort of overextend here a bit with the T1 Heavy. I'd better off I stopped a bit earlier. But he hasn't managed to put a round into me yet. He does put that one in though. And it hurts quite a lot. I don't have a lot of hit points left at this point. And we managed to get the kill shot in. So now we have five tanks. If we get one more, we're definitely completed the uh, German leg of the um, operation. So another opportunity arises in this VK 3601H. And. Uh, yes. Just about. Uh, somebody had slapped around in before him, but they were five hit points short. So what I have it done now, I would get spotted, so I sort of aim for the rock and then I stop. Because I thought it was in the clear, but I'd forgotten about the tank up there in the middle of the lake that has just revealed itself. I take a nice chunk out of the artillery. And I got finished off by the Tiger 1. Um, it's not going to make a significant difference to the game, we're outnumbered in th uh, 2 to 1. And we have our base is covered so to speak. We have uh, tanks advancing on the enemy base and we have tanks defending our own base so um, and they were making a push on the base but they've managed to be in, uh, that tank has been taken out. Uh, so that's the Tiger 1 that shot me and he's under pressure from a number of different directions and he's taken hits more or less continuously since he uh, has been revealed and that's him gone and then there's a scorpion um, somewhere on the map that um, I haven't seen, I have no idea where he is, though I suspected that he's over at the end of the village on the um, eastern side of the map. The uh, other possibility, of course, sometimes you get, uh, it's a long time since I've seen it happen, but there was a spell there um, a year or two ago, where um, stealthy tanks at the end of the game that were still surviving uh, actually went over there to um, K1. Uh, they managed to cross underwater and uh, if they were fast enough they get across the lake and they get over to K1 and they could hide over there and they were pretty much unspottable except by very very uh, good view range tanks that drove right along the water's edge and even then it wasn't a sure thing as long as they didn't shoot anyone if they just kept hidden they remained hidden and people couldn't find them um, However, that seems to have stopped. So, we um, got over 3,000 damage. We also got a high caliber, which would also have gotten us the... Uh, or completed the German leg of the game. And we got an ace tanker, which is very nice. Uh, the Tiger 1 is a difficult tank to ace. Um, I think I've benefited here somewhat from the reset. 1855 experience has got me an ace tanker in this. And I think normally that probably wouldn't be the case because... There's people out there who specialize in playing Tiger 1s and have thousands of games in them or more and uh, are extremely good with their Tiger 1. Please press like if you've enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and I will catch you again soon. Bye!